The six basic nutrients and an introduction to my plate. What is a nutrient? A nutrient is a substance found in food that is essential for growth, energy, and maintenance of your body. There are different nutrients that do different things, and your body needs all of them. Which means you need to eat a variety of foods because one food does not have all the nutrients in one. The six basic nutrients are carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water. You need all six of these to survive. Carbohydrates. Their main function is to provide our body with energy. Healthy food sources of carbohydrates would be whole grains, cereals, beans, rice, and pasta. Whole grains are when we use the entire kernel of wheat instead of shelling off the exterior layer and getting rid of it. Cereals literally are grains. They are things like barley, rye, rice, corn, etc. And you know what beans, rice, and pasta are. Fiber comes from plant sources only. Thus, it is part of our carbohydrates. Fiber cannot be digested, but it aids in digestion by helping eliminate waste. In other words, it keeps you from being constipated. It allows you to actually work the waste out of your body and function better. There are two different types of carbohydrates. There are simple carbs that have a crash and a burn effect because they are simple, basically just sugar, that burns super quickly, gives you lots of energy really quick, but then it's suddenly gone and gives you that little bit of a crash after. Specifically, that comes from things like candy and soda that have straight sugar, like added sugars in it. Complex carbohydrates have long-term energy. Because they are more complex, it takes longer for your body to burn them, which gives you energy for longer. This comes from food like pastas, bread, starchy vegetables like peas and potatoes. Basically, foods that actually have fiber in them will take longer for you to burn. Straight sugar has no fiber. Be careful not to eat too much carbs. Any extra carbs, any extra energy that your body doesn't need at the moment will be stored for later as fat. Protein is our next nutrient. Protein's main function is to build and repair body tissues. Healthy food sources for protein are meat, poultry, eggs, seafood, milk, milk products, cheese, nuts, and seeds. Plants have protein, but with the exception of tofu, are incomplete sources of protein. You would need to eat multiple plant source proteins in conjunction with each other to make sure you get all the protein components that you need. Which is a good suggestion anyway if you are a vegetarian because living just on tofu is a little bit boring. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. They are what actually build the protein and your body, when you eat the protein, takes those building blocks apart and then uses them to build your body. Your body can synthesize or create some amino acids. They're called non-essential amino acids because your body makes them. We have ones called essential amino acids, which your body cannot make, which means you must obtain them from nutrition. You have to eat them so that your body has these to build itself. There are nine of these essential ones that you must have via food. Eggs are one of the best sources of proteins as they contain all of the amino acids and other helpful items like fats and such. Any meat source tends to be a complete amino acid, but be careful when you eat your vegetables, like if you're vegetarian, that you get the variety of these from your different plant sources. 
Fat is our next essen essential nutrient. Its main function is it provides backup energy. Just like carbohydrates, your body can burn fat to give it energy. When your body stores fat, it is used to insulate and protect your internal organs, which means it is a good idea to have fat on your body. If you have zero body fat, then you have zero protection. And if you bump against the table, you might get internal bleeding and die. Extreme case scenario. Fat promotes healthy skin and can carry vitamins through the body. There are vitamins that dissolve into the fat and can be stored in it. Healthy food sources for fat would be olive oil, canola oil, avocados, olives, flaxseed, nuts, tofu, fatty fish like salmon, tuna, and trout. Those are great sources of fat. They have what we call fatty acids that are really good for you in them and have great health benefits. This slide says good and bad fat, but I want you to think of it more of as fat you should consume more often and fat you should save for more special occasions than necessarily good and bad. It's the amount that you consume that has either healthy effects towards your body or more unhealthy effects. The two good fats tend to lower the bad cholesterol in your body. It lowers the amount of cholesterol that is unhealthy for you and could block arteries and such, which would be the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. The examples for these would be avocados, nuts, olive oil, olives, and fish. A lot of the things that were mentioned on the last slide as good sources. Go figure. Our bad fats or fats that have a tendency to increase the amount of cholesterol that is unhealthy in the body that could block arteries and other things like that could include trans fats and saturated fats. Saturated fats are commonly found in red meat. It's like the steak and stuff that you like. Additional examples would be cakes, cookies, biscuits, donuts, butter, cheese, those sort of things have more saturated fat. That does not mean that these are 100% cut out of your diet, never eat, they're going to kill you, food items. It just means you need to be careful how much of them you eat so that you can be careful how much cholesterol is building up in your body. Trans fats, there's a lot of information out there on those. Generally speaking, you should avoid them if possible. Not very many foods contain trans fats. But be careful anyway. Vitamins are our next nutrient. Vitamins, their main function is to regulate body functions, like make sure your nerves and muscles and your skin actually function the way it's supposed to. Vitamins can be found in these healthy food sources, like fruits and vegetables, especially red, orange, and dark green vegetables. The vegetables and fruits that have rich colors tend to be rich in vitamins. And then we have enriched grains. This is grains that in the processing process, they actually enrich, they add in the vitamins to make sure you are getting them. Boxed cereal, like Cheerios and stuff, tend to be high in enriched grains and actually are a very good vitamin source. And then dairy products contain a large amount of vitamins as well. Vitamins are two varieties. There are vitamins that are fat soluble. They dissolve and can be stored in the fat in your body. That includes vitamins K, A, D, and E. And then there are vitamins that are water soluble. They're stored in just the fluids in your body and are traveled through your body via them. So this would be vitamins B and C and others. Minerals are our next nutrient. Their main function is to regulate body functions, a lot like vitamins, but they do a little bit more with chemical reactions of the body, like building bones and teeth and making sure they're strong. Maintaining the fluid balance in the body as well. 
healthy food sources of minerals, fruits and vegetables, especially the dark colored ones again, your dairy products and animal products. If you've heard of osmosis, this is the idea of fluid transfer through a membrane. All cells have a membrane, right? The fluid transfer occurs because the amount of salt content on one side or the other. If there's a lot of salt on one side of the membrane, the water from the other side of the membrane is going to travel over to dilute that salt content a little bit. That is one of the fluid balance things that minerals help with your body for. Hint, salt is actually a mineral. Water is another one of your nutrients. Your body is made up of roughly 80% water, so water is important. Its main function is to prevent dehydration, keep you functioning, and it carries vitamins through the body. It helps all the body's vitamins, minerals, all the nutrients are carried through the body via water in your body fluids. Water also carries waste products out of the body to help keep your body clean. And it can help regulate your body temperature as well. Healthy food sources for water? Water itself. You do get small amounts of water from your fruits, your vegetables, and juices and whatever you drink. But please note, if you're drinking a sugary beverage, you defeat a little bit of the purpose of the water by having so much of that sugar there that it actually will suck water out of you. Same goes for salt. So make sure you drink water itself on a regular basis as well as other drinks. You should drink roughly eight glasses of water a day. Signs that you could be dehydrated, that you're not getting enough water. First off, you might have darker urine. Urine itself is meant to be a very pale color. If it's dark, you don't have enough liquid in you. And if you feel thirsty, you definitely should go get a drink. Usually the feeling of thirst comes after you have already entered stages of dehydration. It is not a prevention. It is a warning sign after. Let's look at my plate. My plate is meant to help people develop a healthy diet. A diet actually literally means what you eat on a regular basis. So if you go on a radical diet to lose weight, you're going very far away from what you regularly eat. My plate is a government initiative to help people see what they're eating in this visual here and recognize whether they're getting all the nutrients that they need, where they could improve, and help control portion sizes a little bit. It is set out by the USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, that deals with everything from growing food to getting food to people to helping people know what healthy food choices to eat. My plate has five main groups. Fruits, vegetables, protein, grains, and dairy. If you sit down to eat, you should look at your plate and you should see about this kind of proportion set up. Half your plate should be fruits and veggies, with the fruits being slightly less than the vegetables. The other half should contain grains and protein, with the protein being a little less than the grains. And you should have a portion of dairy with every meal, or at least three cups. We'll talk about that later. Let's look specifically at the food, fruits food group. The key consumer message that the USDA has about fruits is to make half your plate fruits and vegetables. You need to be eating them to get enough of that fiber and all those vitamins and minerals that you need. Which means the major, major nutrients found in this food group is vitamins and minerals. Additionally, fiber. Not very many people get enough fiber in their diet. Other tips. You can use fruit as a snack. You can put it in salads or use it for desserts or have it in desserts. Have you ever had a salad, a green salad that has like orange slices or apples or berries, tastes pretty good. Fruits naturally are sweet, which means they could be used for a dessert or in desserts to help reduce the amount of added sugars that you are consuming with that. If possible, you should choose 
whole or cut up fruits over fruit juice. When you juice something, you remove all of the fiber from it. So if you're choosing whole or cut up fruits, you're going to get some fiber. Here is a chart of recommended daily amounts. One and a half cups of fruit is the average with boys that might be going through extreme growth spurts needing a little bit more so they have more of those vitamins and minerals to make sure they're growing strong. Vegetables. Key consumer message, eat red, orange, and dark green vegetables. The darker the colors, the more vitamins and minerals you can find in this food group. Those are the major nutrients, as well as fiber. Don't forget fiber. It's not a nutrient, but it is an important thing. Tips for vegetables. You can choose fresh ones. You can have frozen vegetables. You can have canned vegetables or even dried vegetables. Just get a variety and make sure you're going for some of the darker colors when possible. Here is a chart showing recommended daily amounts. Two cups to two and a half is probably the average. Two and a half is more suggested than just two. With once again, maybe growing boys with growth spurts needing a little bit more to get those extra vitamins and minerals. The protein food group. Key consumer message for it. Keep meat and poultry portions small and lean. Most people eat too much when they eat meat. And you don't need to have that thick rim of fat around the edge of your steak. Trim it off and it becomes a lean meat. You can also choose cuts of meat that contain a little bit less fat overall to keep it lean. Major nutrients found in the protein group. Protein, of course. But minerals and fat are also found here as well. If it's a plant source, you might get some vitamins too. Tips for the protein group. Choose a variety of different protein sources. Instead of just eating one, eat a variety. Get lots of different ones. That way you're getting all of your amino acids. It's highly suggested that you get about 8 ounces of seafood per week because of the fatty acids and the good monounsaturated content of fat in seafood. Try different ways of cooking your proteins. Try grilling, broiling, poach, poaching, or roasting for a variety of flavors as well. Five ounces is a pretty good average, up to six and a half for growing boys. Or if you're an athlete working out a lot, you might need extra protein to build all the muscles that you are tearing. Your grain food group. Key consumer message, make half of your grains whole grains. That means they've used the whole kernel instead of peeling off that outer shell and throwing it away. Major nutrients found in the grain group, your carbohydrates. And you can also find vitamins and minerals, especially if it's been an enriched grain. Other tips, choose 100% whole grain cereals, breads, crackers, rice, and pasta. Check the ingredients list on food packages to find whole grain foods. If it says 100% wheat, that just means that they only used wheat. It doesn't mean they used the whole kernel of wheat. If you don't like whole grain bread, but you like sandwiches, have your sandwich bread be a more processed bread, but make sure that your other grains, like maybe your crackers or your rice, is a whole grain option instead. Six ounces is the average of grains that you should be getting a day. Making sure about half of them are whole grains, that would be about three ounces, should be whole grains a day. Once again, growing boys can have more. Your dairy food group. Key consumer message for dairy. Switch to low fat or free fat milk and get your calcium rich options of dairy. Major nutrients found in the dairy group, we got protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. Dairy has a lot of what you're needed nutrients. Tips about dairy. Go for a low-fat or fat-free dairy product because they have the same amount of calcium and other essential nutrients as your whole milk option, but less of the fat, which means less calories. 
For your information, calories is a unit of measure. It measures the energy that you get by burning that food. When you eat it, your body burns it, and that's energy. If I was measuring fabric, I would measure in inches, maybe feet, maybe yards. If I was measuring the energy my body gets from food, I'd be using calories. Everybody should get about three cups of dairy a day. Some dietary guidelines issued with my plate from the USDA, suggestions for helping have a healthy lifestyle would be one, follow a healthy eating pattern across your life. Don't just go, oh, I don't need to worry about eating healthy now, I'll do it later. Start now and get these patterns in place. There are combinations of food and drink you consume that lead to lifetime healthy or Sometimes your lifestyle can lead to chronic diseases like obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. Start implementing healthy eating patterns to prevent these chronic diseases. Guideline 2. Focus on variety and nutrient density and amount. Make healthy food choices from all your food groups and watch your portion sizes. Most people eat much more than they should. Nutrient density means that that one food has more than one nutrient in it. For example, our dairy products had proteins, fats, minerals, and vitamins. That is nutrient dense because it has more than just one, and it has high amounts of each of them. Aim for nutrient dense food. Guideline 3. Limit your intake of fats, sugars, and sodium. Most people get way too much fat, sugar, and salt in their daily diets. This does not mean cut them out entirely. It just means try to limit them as they are everywhere. Guideline 4. Shift to healthier food and beverage choices. For example, you get home from an activity and you're hungry. Instead of going straight for the bag of chips, maybe go for a more nutrient-dense option like carrots every now and then. The more often you do that, the better. But start shifting that way. Same goes for like a fruit-flavored snack. Eat an actual fruit instead if you can. A solid fat versus an oil. Solid fats tend to be those saturated fats and oils the unsaturated. Refined grains that have had the shell taken off versus a whole grain. Beverage with added sugar versus just water or a not sugar added option. And guideline five, support healthy living patterns for all in your home. Make sure everyone plays a part. Have everybody help planning meals and cooking. Limit the screen time. Unfortunately, right now that is difficult as you are learning at home via your computer or electronic device. And participate in physical activity. Make sure you're up and doing something. Choose things that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy running, don't do running. Maybe do a sport that involves running, but you are so focused on the fun and the enjoyment of the points in the game that the running doesn't bother you. Or maybe do something cool like marching band. By the way, marching band takes a lot of work, but it's pretty awesome fun. Wrestling on the floor with your dog. Just walking around, stretching, doing yoga, all those things are physically active because you're up and moving. And six, enjoy your food, but eat less. Try to avoid oversized food portions. Most people eat way too much when they eat, and that extra energy will be stored as fat on your body for later.